the upcoming activity in construction down in the village, uh, the Belgrade uh, Village. Uh, given that, that we, in order to do anything about those legally, we have to have a, tra a traffic uh, uh, roads uh, control ordinance. Uh, we've been doing things in the past, but uh, pursuant to the law, we really have to have an ordinance. So uh, this ordinance is drafted pursuant to, if I cut the reference right, did I write it down? Yeah, it's a MRSA, MRSA 38, subsection 3009. It gives the exclusive authority for these types of ordinances to the select board to uh, enact subject to a uh, public meeting, and that's what this public meeting is about. And the road ordinance addresses those three areas, parking, traffic, uh, road closure, and uh, uh, sidewalk maintenance. Comments from the public? Yes. Can I ask Jim. about the road closure thing? Uh, the only reason I'm down here is for that, okay. actually. <laughs> and it's because of our 5K road race, which is held uh, the end of this month on Saturday. And every year we, and this is our eighth year doing it, and every year I take a letter to every single resident on the route, which is up Pine and Hill Road down by Hammond and so on, um, and let them know about it so they're all aware of it. We have people on the road up there at Minot Hill, down by the uh, library, down by Depot. Uh, we have the fire department here, we have rescue, we have the ambulance, um, we have all kinds of things. But up until last year, when we had well over 300 people, we could have people go up Minot Hill on one side and down the other, they were fine. But now with 300 people, it's going to be a little more difficult. So we wanted to close it if we could for half an hour. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and John Howes, I, I talked about this early in the uh, beginning of July or in June. But John Howes, who's heading up the effort, uh, came to me and asked if we could close the road. That's when I looked and found that we actually needed an ordinance to uh, allow you to do that. I've actually also developed an application form for people to fill out because it's based on forms that we provide them. And it essentially talks about the same things that uh, Judy talked about. This is pursuant to this ordinance, then they have to take the following steps. They have to get approval from the fire road commissioner and the fire chief, and then from the board of select persons. But given that we won't have another board, no, we'll have one, no, we won't have a board meeting. Yeah, August 1st. August 1st will be a board meeting. What, what, what is that going to do? Yeah, the road race is July 29th, Okay, that's not going to do the That's exactly right. You're right. So if you enact this ordinance tonight, uh, then what we would do is I would request that given what she talked about is being implemented, you either authorize a road closure or not, uh, based on what she said. <coughs> Uh, but that's the purpose of the part, in part, the purpose of the ordinance is to provide for your ability to allow for road closures or not, uh, given um, whatever measures you feel are important. So, you didn't close it last year? Well, we didn't close it, no, but it was more or less the traffic was stopped at the top of Minot Hill because we had um, saw houses across the road um, and we had people up there telling people what you know, they needed to do to come back down around. We closed it, I guess. Don't yeah, ask. Yeah. Uh, anyway, around the other way. And nobody has ever, you know, in the eight years of uh, seven years, said anything or done anything that's, you know. Uh, but we do have all the rescue there. We do have the fire department there. And we do have uh, Delta. And my understanding is it's going to start at? Seven. Well, the road race starts at eight. Eight. And yeah. they should be through with the road closure within a half hour. Yeah, within a half hour. So three tenths of a half. Okay, it seems to me there are two subjects in there. One, one is the uh, ordinance that we have to talk about, and then secondarily, how we <coughs> either close or don't close the road. Any more comments on the ordinance? That's, Any? that's part of the ordinance. Closing well, it would be part of the ordinance, yes, but if the ordinance doesn't pass, yeah. then it becomes another subject we have to talk to. Okay. Any? The one thing that I left out of the ordinance uh, as I was reading through it, was the in the enforcement section. It says the ordinance may be enforced by the code enforcement officer or any other municipal official specifically designated by the ordinance or other law. I would include in that by the code enforcement officer, comma, town manager, comma, or any other municipal officer. So I would just add that. Uh, 
allows me to write letters or whatever I need to do. In this law, <coughs> it's over official. 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 Right. Or any other municipal officials. Ernie. I just like to reinsert the fact that, as I recall, over the years since I've been on the board, since the road race has been going on, they've always come before the board and addressed that issue and we've always talked with the fire chief and coordinated everything through the board and we approved it. And last year, as I recall, we did approve and I thought it was basically a 15 minute you know, close the road, but it could be, it's not officially, officially closed. I mean, it's closed for safety reasons only. So, I'm just yeah. throwing that out. And that supports their request if you would enact this. In the past, we just haven't had the legal authority, so if something would have happened in that road closure, the town, I, I believe, could have been held liable. Is that not right, I mean, so people can sue you whether they want to not sue you. Know, <laughs> true. There may also be another statute that allows you to close the road for special events. Like an yeah, this is the one. But, well, that's a statute. This is an ordinance you're talking about. But this ordinance is going to deal with other issues as you described. So. Okay. Comments? Questions? Yes. I think uh, the section on sidewalk snow removal may not be placed properly in the ordinance. Uh, it's under handicap, the subsection of handicap parking, I believe. And uh, <clears throat> looking at the details of that, especially sub part C, uh, seems to me it's a little premature to be asking for private citizens and businesses to clear sidewalks to a width of four feet. It seems to me that subsection should be left out at the present time and then looked at at some time in the future when we have sidewalks that, that something like that might be possible. Yeah. Actually, it's under uh, <coughs> section three. No, it's the first page. There are copies over on the table, by the way. No, no, maybe. Maybe. If you want to look at them. It's right out of section two is traffic control, temporary street closing, all the way down through C, and then section three, use of sidewalk. Okay, you might be wrong on that. At any rate, and then it says under subsection uh, 3C, sidewalk snow removal. And the, the purpose of that, if you want, the purpose of that is that the sidewalk is down in the village area and has basic advantages, it provides convenience and advantages to the village area. Um, without uh, this requirement, uh, the town would be responsible for maintaining that public way. Uh, and so we would have to go and purchase and provide for so removal of the sidewalk. Many towns and cities, in fact, do so removal in certain areas and some do it in all areas, some do it in none, and some do it in some and not in other areas. This because it's a, a, a relatively small sidewalk and it's uh, in the village um, proper, then this would be putting the uh, responsibility on the local people that abut that sidewalk. I understand that, but I think it's premature because the existing sidewalk that will be there this winter <clears throat> probably could not be successfully cleared to a width of four feet, especially the way the state plows, plows snow into the existing sidewalk. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. I, I, you're saying about the existing sidewalk. Yeah, I don't, I don't object to oh, the I concept know. here, yeah, but rather I think the timing to include it is inappropriate. Yeah. What you can do is provide for an enactment on that portion at a later date. Clause in saying so starting in. And old section C would be the next. Section C would be the, the, the implementation date would be held until 2018 where the construction, the completed construction of the site. Can I juggle your memory a little bit? Didn't, wasn't that part of the questions when the sidewalks are being built? It was. The project up there? It was. That we wasn't responsible for that. Am I correct? We didn't have one. That's right. We didn't have one. That was that was with the discussion with the uh, friends of Belgrade Lakes talking about and the state. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah. They told us that, right? Well, <laughs> yeah. well, all I can say is the law requires 
municipalities to keep all uh, public ways clear, which includes sidewalks. I've had that discussion with them. You cannot, you can, you can require abutters to maintain that sidewalk, which is what this section would do. Uh, but you can't just say we're not going to maintain it. So what, what, what happened? What happens all these years that nothing was ever done? We never maintained. No one, side. no one raised the issue. See, we so, asked that question. I mean, that was uh, one of the big questions that we asked because I mean, these sidewalks aren't going to be. We, I was asked in 2009 whether we would put all those sidewalks in the village. Prior to the, my answer, which was not only no, but uh, subject to that, the, the, the subsequent to that answer. I looked into it and, and found out that we're, we're responsible for maintaining sidewalk without an ordinance that specifically places that responsibility on the departments. It's my understanding. Well, I know a lot of towns that do, yeah, not like do, their, do their sidewalks. They do not do them. And, yeah. and I, I just think that we should, if, it's if we're going to do an ordinance, it should only be uh, required to be enforced if there's a need, not because you know, we, the town is gone. I mean, we're starting to do all kinds of ordinances now, and, and to me, it's like you know, Belgrade is a society that we've gotten along all these years. There are state laws that we have to abide by, which we tend to do. And then I believe we do have some home rule authority as to what we do. do. As long as we're not breaking the law. Right. And Becky, if I'm wrong on some of this stuff, please say. I can't remember specifically what state law says about sidewalk. You're right, it is part of the public way. And it, there might be a section in our notes manual that specifically addresses sidewalks, but I don't have access to that right now. I, I have it, I've reviewed yeah. it, and I looked at the same law, I talked to the state DOT, but I can get the manuals in the law if you want to look at it. So. Well, Oh, yes, Bill. At the very beginning of all discussions, we talked about federal money being in this project, and they said that federal money is in the sidewalks and they had to be kept clean. The state guys said, well, you know, maybe, yes, yeah, we don't know. But every time I asked a question, they acknowledged that that's what the law was. And so I'm just wondering, if uh, if somebody can't walk on the sidewalk and they get hit and get are we in for a lawsuit because they couldn't and also uh, didn't the town vote last year thirty thousand dollars to to build a sidewalk from the church up to up to uh, thank you up to the uh, that was for the whole sidewalk. Center. The whole project was 30, we committed 30,000. <coughs> the streetscape as a whole, I think. Yeah. But the so isn't the, the town project. itself uh, reliable? I mean, liable to do that rather than just the uh, budding uh, landowners? Okay. Again, I'm only uh, referring back to the law, which requires both that the, the public ways be maintained. And the fact that in order to to transfer that requirement, you have to have an ordinance to do it. You can't just assume someone's going to do it. So uh, this ordinance would basically transfer the requirement of maintaining the sidewalks to anyone, any business, uh, uh, residents, uh, or seasonal residents even, uh, to maintain that sidewalk once it's constructed. And that's what the requirements are. Now we do have local. You do have local control in the state of Maine. Um, local rule, local rule. Uh, you can do whatever you want. All I'm telling you is the state law requires. You can't. You can't violate state law. But you can do lots of things. Like Michael, I think um, Dick Ward's mm -hmm. comments are worth considering. Uh, he's right. Right now, you know, if somebody wanted to shovel the sidewalks, they couldn't do it. Couldn't do it in the park. Right, exactly. And I'm thinking that. Uh, one or two things. We can either leave this in and then choose not to do anything about it until an issue comes up. Or we can take it out altogether and put it back in if an issue comes up. And that's, that, frankly, that's what <coughs> would favor. Just leave it out for now. 
all it takes is another meeting like this, and we can put it back in. So if it, be, if it becomes a problem. So that's what I would suggest. I would agree with that problem. Okay. Stop Issue. Well, the one thing is the issue will come up when the sidewalk's completed and it's uh, covered with snow. That's when the issue will come up. But you can do, you can certainly delete it. I mean, and you don't have to address it until an issue comes up. You know, the worst part about this whole deal is as soon as the state goes down by there with a the plow truck, that sidewalk's going to be full again. So somebody's going to be cleaning that steady. That's not going to go well. I can tell you. If I lived up in Belgrade Lakes, I'd probably be in here screaming. Well, they do Especially now, if you put an audience in. What do they do now? Do you do your own sidewalk? We don't have them. We don't have them. How about your neighbors? <laughs> well, they have sidewalks. Do you, do you do your own sidewalks now? <coughs> no. Nobody does. I've tried. No. So it's just not done. It's just not done. Right. Never plowed the one out there. No, no, no. It's, 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 right in there. it's a losing battle against the state. I yeah, guess. absolutely. That's, that's, the, that's the problem that I feel that we would be forcing on the people to deal with something which is almost unaccomplishable. And then that, then all of a sudden now we have a situation where a board, the board could change and say, hey, we're required to enforce this, you will do it, or we're going to fine you. And I don't want to put people, I feel we're here to represent the people in the best interest of the town. And I get to any, I, I know there's potentially liabilities, but you know what? We've dealt with this in this town for I don't know how many years, and there's never been an issue. The two, there's a couple of things. There's been a couple of things that's caused us to do some ordinances, and now one of those things that we did was suffering some side effects from that. And I just, after thinking about this, I just feel that we need to step back and really think about what does the town really have to do. That's my opinion. I, mean, I appreciate the input from Denny, but... <coughs> Denny? Just come. Absolutely. I'm not trying to enforce anything on town other than provide you with uh, the best advice I can based on what I understand the law to be. You certainly can take that advice or not. I'm not trying to force this on anyone. I'm just providing this based on the information <coughs> I have uh, for you to... To, to look at. I think the issue that uh, was brought up by certainly is a, 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 an issue that uh, merits uh, uh, some discussion and you've discussed it and this certainly wouldn't be, even though we have the responsibility now according to state law to maintain public ways to keep them clear, we haven't been doing it. So I suppose if you don't do it in the future, if you wait and something happens, that's a risk you take, right? I mean, that, that's business. That's just the way it is. So you don't have to address this in the future even, except for if someone were to provide some libel suit, whatever, and they can always do that. Howard? So Dave, it's your understanding that if I walk down to the village next winter, before the state's done the new sidewalk, just I walk down there and there's some ice on the sidewalk and I slip and fall, the, the town is liable? The town is, has been and will be liable, yes. But, a little more to that. If you plowed and sanded that sidewalk and somebody fell and got hurt, you're still liable. Yes, because I got special insurance for sanding. And I asked why. We can go against the homeowners too. So I mean, it's, big, it's a big vicious circle. <laughs> well, these things are they're difficult. They impact people in ways that you know, no one really likes. <clears throat> I know what Ernie's talking about when you pass ordinances and they, they have uh, un Unrealized yes. I didn't even call him, so he's doing good. No, but the point the, the point is this is this is this is what, uh, based on the <coughs> that came before me as I you know uh, discussed them last uh, board meeting I think it was the issues that became before me I said this is what I was going to do based on what my understandings were for you to review have a public meeting on that now it's up to you. Becky. I, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't come prepared to help with this discussion more. Uh, my memory is that with, with the roads and the sidewalk being part of the road, you have a duty to keep them uh, passable for motor vehicles or pedestrians, but the liability is triggered by defects. And the court case is saying that, that a defect isn't you know, snow or ice. 
Um, so the condition of some parts of the existing sidewalk might you know, qualify as defects in terms of the uneven surface and so forth. I'd be glad, if you wanted to table that part of the ordinance, I'd be yeah. glad to work oh, with Danny and see if we could try to come to an agreement on you know, what the liability might be, and then you could decide in the yeah. future. Yeah. Right. Plus, would there be any state liability if the state had plowed and blocked the sidewalk off and you were walking in the middle of the road and got hit? Is there state liability? I don't think, I don't think there is um, because of the plowing as there? opposed to defense. It doesn't mean you wouldn't feel bad if somebody did what is, what is the procedure here now that we... Um, you can remove that section. I realize that, but when do we do that? We have to be in, in, in a regular session or can we do it at the meeting? Well, you have to do it in your session. This is the session. Yeah, after this. We can do it and then we can do it this meeting. Yeah, this yeah. Okay, thank you. This is a public meeting for I realize that, but we... Yeah. Any more discussion? Yes. Uh, one thing you might point out that <coughs> you have some landowners that are not there during fall winter. One example would be the lakeshore. Now they have almost, I'm going to say, over 200 feet. And down there, the snow blows, and the state plows <coughs> almost every day when they go through, they plow it. And they'll fill that sidewalk. Also, you're going to have snow between the existing sidewalk and the road. Mm -hmm. And you've got to put that snow that you take from the sidewalk off. And it's, the only place it's got to go is on the landowner's lawn, mm -hmm. like that. And that is full of sand. Mm -hmm. so, and you're going to have to brush it in the spray. Okay. I plowed my drive, uh, sidewalk for three years. Everybody liked it to walk there. But it was a son of a gun to clean. It was <laughs> so what do you do now? I don't know. You, <laughs> you may be side of the street. Is that what you say? That's right. It stays right out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just to, I, 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 just to, I did bring it to the village group. Village people. I did raise this issue to them. And they understood. And uh, so I did tell him exactly you know, that this is what would happen. Yes, right. But uh, again, we can defer on this and uh, maybe pass the ordinance that we just have this without it, assuming you also input, put input, put into the section that I said in town for enforcement. That's my comment. Any more comments? Yes. One question that might help you out. You might want to check with Opal. Because a lot of their areas is the same as ours. And what they do is they have a machine that comes yep. around and blows it. But they have to remove the section from the road to the sidewalk. And that has to be removed. Otherwise, you know, they can't keep the yeah. place. But I think Oakland actually does clear the sidewalks. Yeah, yes, they, they do. Clear and they clear it at the town expense. But I mean, it's their yeah, machine. Right. Yeah, you know, they have that, that, that specific machine to do it, yeah. It's like Portland and a lot of the other towns I need to keep. Any more comments? Or yeah, Is that the only one we're going to talk about is uh, sidewalks? Or is anybody well, else want to talk about the back end? I think we're going to cover the uh, Judy's problem in, in the regular meeting. But then we've got parking. Uh, parking is part of the... Yeah, part of the ordinance. Okay, but I kind of thought we specified on just side. Well, it, I, is there anybody that wants to come in on the parking part of this? I guess that's what I'm asking. <laughs> yes. Well, you have in section four that it's unlawful for any person to park for view unattended a motor vehicle other than authorized emergency response vehicle in the following places. One of them is in front of public or private driveway. How are you going to enforce this? Are you all going to have tickets we can put on their car? Or drive them? Oh, nice. <laughs> Denny's going to come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That if you have these orders, are, you can't pass. <coughs> there are issues, for instance, if I were to come down in front of your parking uh, in your driveway and park there and walk away to go to the uh, day store. The, to the uh, farmer's market. What, or to the farmer's market. There you go. What do you do now? You have no recourse. Right? I park right behind them. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> but the point is, it's, it's difficult. This would give the authority to someone to do something about it. 
It doesn't mean that we're going to go down there. It would be the code enforcement officer would tell me manager. So it doesn't mean we're going to go around looking for people violating parking. It's when an issue comes before us. We don't have the resources to, to do it all the time. But this gives us the authority to do certain things in the parking when they need to be done. Well, we would be able to do something. If you were to call me up. That guy's going to be gone. I don't know about that. That could be. But right now, you have no, no uh, relief. At least you have something to do. There would be a vehicle to give you that relief if you could get there in time. There are other parking issues that we're confronting now as well. Uh, we have people parking in areas like the Lakeshore Beach Park. We have people parking there uh, as part of a, uh, another person's business, taking up that parking area so that people that use the beachfront can't use the beachfront. They can't park there. So th this could address that issue as well. In fact, that's one of the issues that came up uh, that made me look at the issue and, and, and uh, look at the parking ordinance. Blocking the dry hydrant. Or blocking a dry hydrant or all of those issues. We have no authority right now, even though we put signs up. There's no legal authority for us to enforce it. Ernie. Well, I just, some of the park, first off, until the road is done up there, we don't know what the real issue is going to be. The road is going to be wider, <coughs> and there are actually going to be places marked for parking. And as far as uh, the hydrants, the fire department and stuff, I do believe there is a state law. And there are state laws that do restrict yeah, where yeah. you can park. So we can, all we got to do is state rules. Yeah. yeah, and that's that is a state yeah, law yeah, through yeah. there. So it's just a matter of calling state police if you have an issue with somebody's park because it's illegal park. There is a state. There are state laws about that. So we're enforcing. We're going to pass an ordinance now to you know put more. I uh, now local officials really. So be, uh, that's, I'm just we're waiting for somebody. To park in front of the the hydrant, uh, you know, if we have a have an emergency call and need to get at it, because it will go right through their windows and we'll hook right on them. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that that's one of the problems, Bill. If you do that, then you're liable. If you have the ordinance, you do it in, in Boston and in New York. This is not Boston. This is not New York. And we don't but want to know. But that's where they come from. Yeah, but they all have <laughs> <laughs> touche. Okay. <laughs> Are there any more, any more coaching comments? <laughs> no? <laughs> Looking for a motion. Close the meeting. Motion. I'm going to so close the meeting. I have a second? Yep. Move and second. All those in favor of closing the public meeting? Unanimous. <clears throat> Make a motion. motion to, yep. I have a motion. Is there a second? To start the regular? Yeah, I'm sorry. Moved and second, we start the uh, board meeting. All those in favor? We have a quorum. Now we have to act on two things, or one thing specifically. We, we have to act on the ordinances before us. And if the ordinance passes, I think that you're taken care of in all probability. If it does not, we have to uh, make some concessions for the uh, for the block that's been going on for eight years. So, yes. I will move approval of the ordinance minus section C, which covers sidewalk snow removal, and with the amended uh, wording that Denny suggested concerning the town manager and code enforcement officer. I'll second it. Move to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? <laughs> okay. Guys. okay, that that effectively kills that for now. Uh, but now we have to make some concessions for the, the walk. And I, we do that with, I guess we do that with a motion that, that I think you just leave it alone like we have been. You don't do it. You don't do anything. You can't well, you can't. legally you can't. You can do whatever you want. Legally it has They've come and told us, fine. It, the, it, and let me, I, I want to enlighten a little bit on it. The road isn't completely closed. If there's an emergency yeah, I, I down through it. there, yeah, yeah. emergency vehicles can get down through. 
That's been the understanding since they've been doing this. So. But I would hope that they go she go away with our approval. I don't think you can. Well, we always have in the past. I think we just kind of said. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, do no vote on it because, because the fire it's not legal. Said it was okay. They were going to be there. The fire department was going to be involved. We had the proper people there. All we did was, as I recall, we just said yes, it's okay because they always came and asked for permission. Yep. <clears throat> yes, it's okay to do it. And we're not. And all we're saying is yes, it's okay to do it, and the people will be there to make sure everything is okay. And all they're doing now is just making sure nobody gets hurt by doing whatever they do. We're not saying close the road off. Uh, we're just saying it's okay to do the race. Does that satisfy so, you, Jimmy? Is it okay to do what we've been doing then, exactly the way we've set it up before, and we're just saying we can do? It's been working and nobody's complaining. We're not saying yes or no. I can All we're that. telling you is <laughs> run your race and have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Let's, let's, yeah, go ahead. Oh, Danny, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. No, you're not. Uh, you've been doing this for years? Yeah. We've had no ordinance now? Seven years. We have no ordinance now? So you do what you think is right. Yeah. All right. You got or it. Wrong. <laughs> well. <laughs> don't. What are you supposed to tell John House now? Daddy says it's no. Often, they say yes. You say you don't know. Well, no, no, no. No, no, no. Here's the issue. Yeah. John came and asked me whether or not he could close the road. Right. The guys could close the road. Right. And this is a responsible safety, request. A safety I looked event. into it. We can't authorize, legally authorize that what we're the town can't legally authorize that road closure without an ordinance. All right? That's the difficulty. So we don't have an ordinance. What have you been doing is I think what the board is saying, what have you, what have you been doing? We have been we don't want to know. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, well, no, we've been no. blocking off the road at the top of Minor Hill. We've been blocking it off at uh, down, not exactly, down in the turn, when they go on to Minor Hill. Only because there have been cars that have gone down, but you get 300 people on that road running. You can't very well have a vehicle go by. Um, I mean, I... Have, have you had any complaints? No. No complaints no. whatsoever. No. This is done. And no. I still will continue giving the letters <clears throat> out to everybody that's, oh, good Lord, Michael Barrett. Mr. Barrett? It seems to me I recall the one or two times I participated, not as a runner, uh -huh. <laughs> but I helped out with that thing. We had at least one hothead on the minor Yeah, well, we don't have that hothead anymore, if that's what you want to call him. I was trying to be nice. Yeah, but you, you weren't. Go ahead. He's more of a, he was a pain in the <laughs> But, he's, but yeah. he's fine. Okay. He's fine, yes. Because he sees me when I go in. When I go, I'm the one that takes the letters around to each one of the residents. Okay. When I come up to the door, he said, oh, it's the road race. I said, yep, here's all your information. He said, okay, we're all set. I said, okay. Good. Yeah, no, and you fine. carry uh, insurance in case somebody's hurt up there? Is that true? I don't have a clue. Okay. I really don't. I don't know. I'd have to ask my treasurer. I Stop laughing, then. No, I'd have no, to ask no, the treasurer okay. then you have. Seriously? I'm not going <laughs> to ask any more questions. <laughs> and I guess we're going to leave this letter. Well, it's been defeated. It's been defeated. No, well, the, the ordinance has been defeated, but... <laughs> if you don't act on it, it's a done deal. All right. Okay, so just tell John have a nice we'll day. continue as we've been continuing. You, you com don't come down there, Danny. Are you comfortable with that? Wait, well, wait. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do at this point? Well, you can say I'm not comfortable with it. Well, then what, what good is that going to do? Well, if you're not comfortable with it, we'll reassess what we're Well, if you'd like to, you know, you could spread the, the, uh, the decision-making capacity by forcing us to vote, I would think. That's what I'm getting right. at. If you're not comfortable with it, we can, we can vote. We can it. vote. What? Well, I'm afraid you're going to say no, we can't even do it, and then the whole race is going to be gone. We've already got all these people registered, for heaven's sake. This whole thing is If we were going to say that, we would have said it by now. Becky? There is a discussion in the roads, in any roads meeting about closing roads for emergencies or special events. And it says a police officer may close or restrict the use of a road as necessary for public safety during emergencies, accidents, or special events. And then it talks about a municipality's authority through the board to adopt an ordinance that would allow the board to close a road for special events. I was thinking that the law gave you the authority on a case-by-case -case basis, but yeah, I guess it's law enforcement, so. Um, we don't have the authority, nor do we have the police force. No, right, uh, but it, just, it doesn't say a municipal police officer, so I wonder whether you know, the sheriff could. Well, we do know that they're going to be, we have some of the policemen are going to be running in the mm -hmm. race. Yeah. <coughs> well, then, so, give me some then I guess you got your answer. I know, exactly. Jacob Roddy or somebody else. Right. 
I think here's the issue as I see it. We have a citizen come forward who's making a request. We have a municipal official, <coughs> town manager, look into it and provide advice. There, we don't have an ordinance, uh, so the 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 citizen uh, is left without recourse other than what the law says, which says you can ask the policeman. Right. I guess that's where we're at, right? Because there's nothing that we can do. We can't authorize it. Or I guess we can. Practice, but we could at least ask the sheriff to do it. On their behalf. We could. Um, yeah. I mean, this is getting way out of. Yeah. Yes, I, exactly, do it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's do what I'm, you've been doing. Have a nice yeah. day with it. Stand tall and say, you know, if you want to. I'll, I'll, I'll apologize. Come see us if he's somebody's got I'd rather problem. apologize and get it done than not get it done. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, it's a big fundraiser and it and helps the friends yeah, I got you. at yeah. the public library, you know, so the town doesn't have to pay for that. I said, no, no, no. Yes, go ahead. Pardon I have just one other thing, and I, this is kind of off beat a little bit. But Bill back here, I recall him saying back along at one of our meetings, I, might, I think it was even a town meeting, where you said, I just do it and then ask for an apology. I just apologize. Yes. <laughs> ask for forgiveness after that. I think that's the answer. That's the answer for me. I know in the past we've always said it's okay. Yeah, I know. Stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. Just well, we've, got, we've got some state talking. We've already stopped talking. Okay, we're going to go on. It's done. It's done. We're off on other, <coughs> off on other <coughs> business, folks. We're off on other business. Thank you. Thank you, I guess. Thank you. Sorry for the performance. Good luck, you got these Okay, the town, please, the town had, you guys want to stick around for the presentation here? No, they're not interested. <laughs> town has a presentation, we've got a copy. This is from Benny Ketchell to the Historical Society, which will allow us to display it. So, Benny, if you'll go ahead, please. Turn it alone. On loan, yes, it'll be on loan. We have a, a facsimile that was donated to the Historic Society. It's a facsimile, it's actually a photograph. It was a digital copy of the original charter that incorporated the town of Mountain Green And you can read, it's, it's a very high quality digital copy. We had it framed and uh, it was donated to the Belgrade Historical Society. Uh, and so, uh, the Belgrade Historical Society, I'm currently the past president of the Belgrade Historical Society, as of the last meeting, but the, the individual who's going to present it could make it tonight. So, we're presenting this on permanent loan to the town of Belgrade for yes, hanging yes. in the office so they can see the actual handwritten uh, yep. uh, version of the incorporation papers for the town of Belgrade, back in 1796, February 3rd. Big smile. And I think the board gratefully accepts that. Is something we'll hold on it? I would just like to say, as a board member, I really appreciate Jenny's effort, the town manager's effort to have that happen. Yes, thank you much. Second thing is not on the agenda. Uh, we have a proclamation that, that is uh, it's been requested that we accept this, and there are a couple of things we can do. This is a proclamation whereas cancer is a leading cause of death by disease among U.S. children is, and is detected in more than 15,000 of our country's sons and daughters every year, whereas the state of Maine cancer affects more than 50 new children and families annually, where more than 400 children are undergoing treatment currently, and where we are ranked in the top range of incidence of all cancers at 468.3 per 100,000 people. And it goes on, and, and what it ends up saying is, therefore we, the Board of Select Persons of the Town of Belgrade, Maine, to hereby proclaim that in support of the Maine, the state of Maine gold in support of childhood cancer awareness. From this day forward, recognize September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. This is our way of paying tribute to the family, <coughs> friends, 
professionals, and communities who lend their strength to children fighting pediatric cancer. And it requires a signature from the board. Do you have a separate proclamation? Okay. Am I going to move the board accepted? The vote is seconded, board accepted. All those in favor, and it's unanimous. Wow. We're going to mount this down. First time we vote, what do you want? Okay, no more garbage. Okay, next thing under new business on the agenda is we have a petition uh, starting the withdrawal process for our school, or for our kids, uh, from RSU 18. The requirement was 169.7 signatures. There are 170 signatures. So we start at step, so let's do three. We have to schedule this for a public vote, public meetings and then a public vote. Uh, so it is open, well it's not open for discussion. And we have no choice but to accept this petition. Right. It is a petition, so. Need a motion. I do, I think, need a motion to accept it. Is that? I don't think they need one if it's. Don't need it? Then petition, am I correct? No, well, we, don't, we don't need a vote if it's been petitioned. We have, we have you're, to. You're required to, to accept it. That's right. Okay. Vote to accept I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Vote to second to accept it. All those in favor? Okay. I guess we're going to vote. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> no, I voted for it. Yeah. Uh, just as a comment, as I understand, uh, the article that we have to put up to referendum uh, is essentially that article under step two. And we have to put a sum of money in there. And I talked to the um, main municipal association about quantities of money and all that. And they said, <coughs> best advice, if, if you have a differing opinion about the money that would be uh, put into that, is to go with the money that was essentially voted on during the petition process. And if you need more money at some point in time, you'd have to increase back, it. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to go back and get that money. That's the advice I got from the main municipal association. Danny, since that figure is in the petition, we don't have to vote on the figure. No, I'm just saying, um, okay. if, you were, if you were thinking about the fact that you might need more money. Yeah, we should change it now because we can put a different number. You, 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 you could, yes. but the, the advice was that they should accept the number that was presented in the petition. But I just put a different number in it. Versus putting a different number in the power. I would just share with you that that money, that number was not just pulled out of a hat. That was the recommendation of the person who is now the current superintendent in Newport. And it was based Northport? on. Northport? Northport, I'm sorry. Northport. And it's based on the amount of money which they spent in the preliminary process. So that's that's where the that's where the figure came from. Yeah, no, and I just in case someone was thinking that it was part of the money, I mean the point is they recommended that we put that in there. Okay, this is a big question. This is a big process. Uh, we have an election in November. It can go on the ballot then, as I understand it can go on the ballot earlier if we vote to do that. We can actually set up your own set up our own dates. But we, that means we fund another election if we do that. Uh, so it, actually, I think our job at this point is just to get the timeline set up with with the public meetings and the vote to determine if we're going to go on from here. Yeah, Ernie. I would recommend the no longer election. I'll second that. Yeah, I, I, is that a motion? But I, I make a motion. Okay, to and it's been seconded. And all those in favor of November. That seems to me to be the right time. It gives everybody plenty of time to think about it and to and you do what has to be done with it. Yeah, proper time. Yeah. yeah, and just as a comment, we did provide. Assuming that you would go with November, I had no reason to believe that. But assuming that you did, there is a timeline. There is a timeline that we we will follow if you. There's a timeline we set up. All right, beyond that, we've set it up as far as I can see. It is, it's, 
So as far as the public hearing, at what point will we establish that? Uh, we, we will. We will have to do it before. We'll post this to the public hearing on September. August 25th. September 5th, we do the first public so hearing. There's a public hearing. And then, based on the comments that come out of that public hearing, if you decide to change the referendum questions based on those comments, then you have a second uh, public uh, hearing, which is required, which is there. What's the purpose of a public hearing anyhow? And then, uh, and then it goes through, we finalize the ballots, and it goes right through the list of steps right in there. Yeah, the timeline is laid out. It's pretty well. So. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is a proposed athletic complex for RSUA team, Oslansky High School. Uh, we attended, Denny and I attended the meeting. Our two school board members were there. They attended the meeting. Uh, they're looking for 3.8 million, but that number's probably going to be higher than that to redo the track and some other facilities here. Uh, generally, there was uh, a lot of good questions. Uh, one specifically that I liked was, was this has not gone through their facilities group that was doing the other study on facilities. So you've got this 3.8 or 5 million, whatever it is, hanging on one side. You've got 10 to 70 million hanging on the other side. So it becomes, in my mind, problematic unless they get it combined and figure out how to do this. So. <clears throat> Danny had asked both our school board members to attend. Uh, uh, the, I, the meeting was, well, actually, our new member asked some great questions like that. And, and Becky did too. Kathy asked another great question. <laughs> it was uh, heavily attended, and there was probably 30 kids there. So, anyway, I think that's open for discussion. I think, Denny, if you want to talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I'm basically looking for direction. Uh, they've deferred the vote on this particular bond package until the next board meeting, which I think it is in August 9th. August 9th yes. So there's about three weeks, two, two and a half, three weeks. Uh, I'm going to be attending that board meeting. I don't know if there will be an opportunity for more public comment. The way the meeting was left was that the school board directed the superintendent to look at the basic uh, safety health issue needs that were identified in, uh, uh, for the school and place this particular bond package in a pri priority, uh, on a priority base for those other, I think there's about $10 million worth of needs that have been ident identified in that health and safety thing throughout the school. So the real question that they were asking is this bond, is this bond more important than others? life safety and health issues. Uh, so he's going to do that. The real question in my mind, and uh, I, I, you can certainly uh, look for input from the school board members, but the real question in my mind, and I'm looking for direction for you, is what is, what is, uh, what do we say at that meeting if we get the opportunity to say, or do you want me to write a letter? Because my concern is there's a potential, as uh, the chairman suggested, there's a potential for uh, anywhere from $10 million to $70 million in a facilities plan. Now that facilities planning group has kind of faltered, but it's still there, they have a need. So if you expend this $3.8 million on doing a worthwhile project, I'm not gonna deny that this isn't a worthwhile project. What happens <coughs> if then larger facilities plan uh, gets approved, but it impacts some of these areas that you've already spent money on? So where does this fall in that facilities planning process? That's my question, but I don't know how you want me to address that question. <coughs> you want me to address that question. Did everybody read the article? Okay, you know that uh, Rome, Rome's select board went out with a letter, very well worded, and they, they gave about the same, had the same problems I think that Denny and I had while we were there. So, uh, school board members, any comments? And you don't have to comment. Yeah, no, in terms of the facilities committee process faltering, I think that it was consciously brought to a, a conclusion, or at least a temporary conclusion. Six, five options were identified in terms of the buildings, yep. 
And then after it was referred to the board, there was a sixth option that was generated, I think, through some administrative team discussion. And the plan, because we then got into the budget season, the plan was, and as far as I know, it still is, to schedule a series of public meetings. We had a meeting in China. We tried to move our meetings around to different towns in the district. We had a meeting in China, I believe it was last fall, um, it might have been early winter, where there, w there was some discussion about having the board narrow the, the building options down to one and bringing and costing that out and bringing that to, to public meetings to get input. <coughs> and I felt, personally, I felt pretty strongly about having those meetings focus on all the building options that we'd identified and see if voters, what voters' reaction was to that as well as if anybody came up with something that we hadn't thought of. And I think we still have to decide as a board whether we're going to identify one or two and go to public meetings on those or groom all of them. But the plan right now, as I understand it, is to have Carl look at his schedule and figure out when that's doable and it will happen. I know now they've scheduled cost sharing committee meetings for September, but I think that the plan was to have public meetings, I don't know how many we're talking about, but have public meetings where the general public would get to see the, the six options that have been identified and roughly cost it out, and then uh, see if we can narrow it down from there. Because there's not just a financial, as I said in the, one of the articles that appeared early in the spring, I mean, there's certainly significant emotional and historical issues for some people, as well as the financial, very serious financial issues that, that this whole process represents, too. So. Um, and the fire marshal, Rich McCarthy, was on the facilities committee, as some of you know, and so he put his fire marshal's office hat on and, and uh, identified some safety issues that violated state fire codes of varying degrees. And the report that was handed out, I can't remember if it was in April or in May, um, indicated that some of the things the fire marshal's office would be willing to let us defer until we figured out which building project we were going to go with and, and others probably be more immediate concerns. And I think that the discussion <coughs> at the last meeting of the board, the safety, the ADA and Title IX and other safety issues with the athletic complex sort of brought to the fore the need to get serious about dealing with some of the more immediate fire issues. We have been trying to deal with some of those issues through these revolving reno renovation loan fund um, applications, and we've been pretty successful in getting those approved by the state, and that's been a way to have um, lower interest rate, fairly long, relatively long payback period, and, and forgiveness of, I think it's half of the loan that's forgiven. So we try to use that as a tool as well. And I realize I'm probably getting a little bit far afield from what you had in mind here. I think, I think from my point of view, I, I would like to see Denny get a letter that we'll sign that, that talks about, that they don't seem to have a plan. This seems to be, we do this, and then we do this, and it doesn't join, and there doesn't seem to be a plan there in my mind. And I'd like to see us send a letter stating that that needs to be wrapped into a plan of sorts and then presented as a, as a cogent plan that people could look at and say, yeah, we probably need to do that. That's what I think. Denny. Just as a comment, am I mistaken, Becky, uh, uh, or, or not? Is, at the next meeting, Carl's going to fit this into this uh, health and safety issues. But there's, my understanding is there is going to be a vote at that meeting. It was deferred. It, it was deferred to the next meeting. That doesn't mean that the board, after hearing what Carl has to say and what others no. have to say, that the board couldn't decide to, uh, to sort of reconsider the vote that was taken and come up with a different approach. So um, Right, but, but if they were to vote on it, without a facilities plan, then it's possible that some of that money could be ill spent. Is that not true? If, if, if given the larger... The ill spent in terms of whether it had an impact on the building. On the, the larger money. Uh, I guess that's theoretically possible, but I, I'm a little hesitant to say that with certainty without um, stepping back and, and thinking again about what Rich's recommendations were and which buildings were, were affected by that. So. Howard, yeah. does, the, does the board have the authority to commit to a bond without a public vote? No, no, they go to, no, no, it has to go to the public. Okay, the way you were talking, it sounded like no, no, no. there was going to be a no deal. Vote, the board vote votes on in August. Yeah, it'll okay. go out vote for all five towns. Yeah, it'll go out to vote for all five towns. In my understanding, I asked the question at the meeting, 
was how does that vote, how is it counted? It, as I understood the answer, it was all five towns, all the voters, it would be the majority. Civil majority. I, another thing, you know, I've read a lot about it, and there's nothing in there saying what, you know, once you get this thing built, it's going to cost money to maintain it. Sure. There's nothing shown in place what the project is going to be to maintain it. It's not going to be cheap. I can tell you that. That's not part of the money. No, it's all for your money. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Just peanuts. You pay, don't pay that later. Yeah, that's right. In all it's fairness, absolutely. they 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 plan on trying to raise money through various donors. And that's fine. But but I'm, I'm just in, being fair. Yeah. They're going to they're going to try it. I read that too. I read. It. More yes, Penny. Um, my problem with it is it's going to be an old one. And I understand from the chart that they're going to pay more money for, towards it than the other towns. I understand that. However... Uh, that's, yeah. Go ahead, Becky. No, I, I mean, the, the bond issue will be debt that will be paid proportionally by the member so, towns that yes. they for it. Andy, really Cook, Andy Cook proposed a motion that, was, that right. would have a different configuration of percentages, but we did we defeated that motion because a number of us questioned whether that was a legal way to approach it. Uh, I think he mentioned the way the debt was apportioned for the middle school project, mm -hmm. and that was when we were in SAD, and there was no consolidation plan governing the, the you know the debt apportionment the way there is now in that plan. So, so that motion was defeated anyway. Go ahead. If I can just sure, yeah. um, I'm, I'm saying yeah. I, I, I don't know what you. Know. No, that's that's the way I heard it. Yeah. Okay, so that chart that came out that said Oakland would pay the most and other towns would pay less is what chart? Was, well, that, that was the there was there was a chart put out by the proponents during the previous oh, board meeting. Oh, okay. uh, it was a it was a slide presentation. Yeah. And then there were some questions, and there was a chart that came out. You must be part of that whole yeah. team. And the chart came and out, and based on a hundred thousand dollar home, it said that yeah. Oakland would pay more. Right. The actual cost sharing formula for local additional funds, but this would this would be in capital improvements, is the same as it is now, which is twenty five percent based on student population, seventy five percent based on valuation. Yeah. Cost currently, we would pay the we, we would pay the most. Pay the greater share. And it's not in Belgrade, so our citizens wouldn't get the use that Oakland citizens, other than the dis people in the school. And that's true with all of the facilities that we have already. Our kids have to go to Oakland to participate. And um, just, just so that you know, um, when my daughter was participating, they were building a new school. I think it was high school, and or it might have been a junior high. Middle school was the last new one they built. <laughs> okay, but what happened was um, you had the boys and the girls. You had junior varsity and varsity, so they had to uh, schedule all the practices with the gyms that they had. So it ended up that the girls' basketball team had to come clean out to Belgrade for their nine o'clock practice, and you wouldn't believe the crying and weeping and, and blah, blah, blah from those girls. And I thought to myself, welcome to our world. This is what our Belgrade kids do for four years. So my point is, that's a lot of money. And, and the other question I have is, it sounds like these five or six proposals on building um, pending, like they're moving, and I thought we had plenty of time. So if we're talking about seventy million on that, plus three million on, on five on this, that's a hunk of change. And to go back to RSU eighteen just for a moment, if we could bring the tax rate down, more Belgrade people could own shore property or keep the shore property that they have. But if this, if we get zapped with this. They're not going to be able to. So, my my preference would be to say it's it's still unfair. We're paying the most, and we don't even get the the um, use. The uh, that that's true. Yeah. We are paying the most, and we continue to pay the most under the present process. Is the way they divide the money up. There is scheduled to be another local uh, funding committee meeting, they went, they're going to go back into session for one or two nights. 
where Denny and I will argue we're paying an unfair portion of it. All I'm looking for tonight is, are we going to send a letter to these guys? Do you guys understand what the problem is here? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, unless there's any more discussion, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay, move to send a letter. I've moved and seconded. All those in favor? What's the letter going to say? This is going to be what did I say it was going to say? Well, I'm asking you to say we'll, stated. We'll review the letter before. We'll review. Yeah, we're going to sign it. Yeah. I will, I will send it out. And the letter essentially covers the points that we talked about tonight in terms of it's, it's, it's part in the bigger plan and things yeah. like that. Just want to be sure, Gary. Well, you can sign it. So you better read it before you sign it. <laughs> Actually, it'll say that we're going to defer all taxes to you, and you can just pay the taxes. <laughs> Town of Belgrade is free. We did. Did we vote? Yes. We did vote, yes. <laughs> okay, the next item on it is a liquor license for the village gym. This is a renewal, and there is a proposal on this. So, Mr. Town Manager. I read this, and, uh, and I talked to the liquor licensing group. And it's all okay, it's a one year renewal, it's a license fee, we're going to have to go And there's been no complaints over the last five years, so it's an easy uh, thing to move forward. The question is, these type of licenses can be delegated if you want, right to me, so we don't have to, uh, not just me, we do it to the town clerk. Other towns are doing that. <clears throat> My particular comment to the uh, liquor licensing group that I talked to, this particular application, as they all do, uh, the page where you sign it, it says, where is that page? Right at the bottom, it says, to the state of Maine municipal officials, you see the thing that happened in the middle where you sign it. Here, we hereby certify that we have given public notice on this application, which we have through the town meeting uh, notice, and held public hearings. Now, you can waive those public hearings if there hasn't been a complaint in the last five years. There's no waiver that came in, nor should, I guess, based on my discussion with the, the uh, liquor licensing inspector, should there have been. But uh, he was pretty nonchalant about uh, reading too much into the public hearing aspect here. Well, I didn't want anyone to sign this without crossing the public hearing there. I just put down waive because that's been past practice. So if you want, you can delegate the authority to me and I can sign it, uh, or you can sign it yourself. But I, I, I crossed out. Um, the actual application, the we held public hearing because we have not held a public hearing. So if we do this, those things that come to us would be first time licenses, one of licenses, and any license that's had a problem over Didn't we do this already? No, that was for catering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Off premise. Okay. So I would I would make a motion that we delegate the responsibility of signing these to our town manager uh, unless one of the aforementioned problems exist. It's a first time application, it's a problem application, or a one time application. So I made that motion. I'll second it with, I would ask you though to amend it to allow him to bring it to us if he feels it should come to us anyway. I would think that, I, I would think that would happen. What I'll do is write up a memo like I have in the past on delegations, and I'll say this is delegated on this night, and I'll let you read it. And uh, then that, under those conditions, then I'll sign it. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm just saying if you feel there's a reason we okay. should see it, that you, you bring it to us. Obviously. Yeah. Ernie, I guess, uh, I know that what that says here. But my understanding in the past, because we just, we've had yeah, sure we have that. We have that. We didn't have to hold a public hearing no. unless it was the first one. If it was the first time they were fine, then we do have to hold a public hearing. And I don't think we can waive that public hearing. So in this particular case, because it's a renewal, I'm not sure. Sometimes they have something on the form, and you know, I just want to clarify that in my mind. I think it's good that you take care of it. But yeah, here's I think that it just clearly, I think that. Maybe they ought to amend that plan. I agree. And, and, and I had quite a bit of discussion with them. And here, it, it, right in their own uh, 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 law, it says the municipal officers and county commissioners may hold a public hearing, but you can't, you, 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 or you can waive it. Yeah. But we haven't been yeah. doing either. So. Okay. Okay, there's a motion on the floor with a second. Any more discussion? 
All those in favor? I'm not, I'm not sure I like that. It's okay. Well, we see everything that's new. You know. But I kind of like to see who's getting them now. Well, yes, that's just these are existing. Residents. I know, I know what they are, but okay. okay. No, I, it doesn't make any difference. No, and no, I mean it's a pretty simple operation. We say yay and nay, and yeah. we move on. It just passed, folks. We have a nomination appointment, David Stevens, to the road committee. I'll second it. Move and second that you be accepted. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Mm -hmm. David Stevens here? David is not here, but wow. I'll make sure that he knows. Got sand and salt bid. Okay. We have the sand and salt bid, bid singular. We had one sort of salt bid. I opened it today pursuant to the, uh, to the uh, part of the public notice. It was from Dave Stevens for essentially the same rate. Well, it was not essentially, it's not exactly the same rate as he did in the past. Thank you, ladies. Uh, Thank you. So I would. Uh, hey, thanks a lot. Huh? I would recommend really that you accept it, but that's up to you folks. I think most of it. Yeah, I'll second it. But uh, is this, I got a question. Is this the $9? Is that for mixing in? Selling the sand? In? Sand in the mix. Wow, good deal. Is that a good deal? Yeah. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor? And loading it in three and Yeah, that's what it says, right? You broke it right. It says right See, here. in the past, it's been two different prices. <laughs> Do you remember right? Well, this is the same exactly contract. Yeah. Before. No, I know. We're talking about prior to that, yeah. if you recall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, gentlemen, we have seven mill rate. I think we'll. We prepare it. Just prepare it. We'll just look at that audience. What a wonderful group that is out there. While you're waiting, I just would like to see under B, like the license for Village in, B1 and B2, um, noise ordinance. <laughs> you would like a noise ordinance? I can work on that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, I've always felt that if you're going to. Um, you know, work on the ordinance but you, and, and pass it and everything, that at the same time you have to make up your mind that you're going to enforce it. Yeah. Because that hasn't happened in the past. Yeah. Well, I intend to enforce those that we have. Thank you. <laughs> you don't realize how bad I got beaten the shoulder down here. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, we're up to uh, setting our mill rates at this point. You have documents in front of you that Dennis will explain and we talked to our auditor today so go ahead. We, we worked with our assessor to come up with assessor uh, to come up with uh, proposed mill rates. We have three here. They range from mill rate of 14.35 uh, to 14.4 to 14.45 uh, with a low uh, overlay of 58425. Uh, uh, to a middle uh, overlay of 86, 643, to a high overlay of 114. And that would give you those three mill rates. Uh, we're recommending, uh, based on the size of our budget, uh, various issues we have with tax names and, 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 and things like that, um, that we accept the middle, the middle proposal at 14.4 mill rate. And what the impacts of that would be if you're looking at a uh, $150,000 property with the homestead exemption, uh, which was increased this year, I believe, by this legislature. Last year we had a mill rate of 14. That property was taxed at that property type was taxed at $1,890. With this proposal at 14.4, the uh, property would be taxed at 1872, or a lowering of taxes of $18. If you had a $200,000 property with the homestead, it would, uh, last year it was taxed at uh, $2,590. This year it would be taxed at $2,592, and that uh, increase would be $2 for a $200,000 piece of property. If you had a $250,000 piece of property with a, a homestead, it, would be, it was taxed last year at $3,292. This year it would be taxed at $3,312, which is an increase of $22. Very marginal increases, um, and so I would recommend the 14.4, but again, that is your decision. 
14.4 is based on an overlay of 86 Second sheet. Okay. I'll, I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second we accept a mill rate of 14.4 with an overlay of $86,640.63. Any more discussion? I guess one other. I have one other yep. question. What was what was the potential problem with using the overlay of fifty-eight thousand four hundred and twenty-five? Well, there's no problem with it. The issue the issue is based on our discussion with the assessment is that given our size and budget, uh, in the number of tax means we currently have, uh, he was concerned that yeah. fifty-six whatever that number was was too low. I kind of concurred, but that's me. And I guess I, I talk, we talked it. No one I talked. Well, I guess the, the overlay. Uh, you know, the overlay number is about 30. Isn't that for abatements? It's for anything that could impact your revenue uh, stream in terms of tax revenue stream. Anything that could impact that. So, anything, so anything that could impact that. It's my understanding in talking to him that that overlay is to provide some, some assurance. Uh, the one other thing I'll say about this, too. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that the overlay was to deal with. Unpaid taxes. If, if a, say for instance, the business goes completely out of business, and you don't collect taxes this year from that business, it just goes back. It's meant to protect against that kind of thing, or other impacts on your budget or revenue. Well, I, I, I just, again, I guess, I just want to have a clear understanding. My understanding is if we have issues with being able to pay our bills because of. Revenue mm -hmm. that comes out of the general fund and not out of the overlay. The overlay oh, ends up going oh, no. into the general fund. I'm talking about the tax. property tax revenues, impacts on property tax revenues. If we don't get the property tax in, yeah. then this is meant to, the overlay is meant to handle it. Well, okay. When it was left in the overlay, it goes into the. It'll, yeah, if you don't spend it, it goes into next year for more rate taxes. Like it always has. Yeah. Right. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the floor. Before you discussion? Yes, there were one other issue. As you know, I passed out an article that uh, talked about uh, the increased funding for education that the, district, that the legislature gave districts. I asked what, uh, what that funding would be for our town and uh, when we could and how would it be distributed because that would have an impact on this. Uh, the response I got was, we are waiting for uh, advisement from the Department of Education as well as our current attorneys at Drummond Woodson. This is a very complex issue, as you know, and we want to get it right. Once we have the word vote uh, on how to proceed, we'll notify towns. So it's not giving us any kind of sense uh, about that. But that, this, they wouldn't be able to do it this year anyways, correct? It would go on well, next year. I think that that's the question because I think the law was passed that uh, essentially said it would be provided this year. I, that's one of my understanding. But that's the, and also the, the vote that was taken at the District 18 meeting when they had votes on all of the articles, including what happens if you get more money. Uh, uh, it was 50% going to tax reduction, right? It didn't say next year. So that's the issues in my mind. That would have an impact on our uh, a, a commitment today, but because we don't have the answer, we're going to move forward. I always thought it went to the next year to upset on the next year. Well, that was that's now what will happen if it comes in this year. Okay, we have a motion and second on the floor to accept 14.4 mill rate and $58,425 and 60% overlay. Is there any more discussion? 86,000. Oh, I'm sorry, I get the wrong thing. $86,643.63. No more discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now, Rick's favorite part of the meeting. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't pick it a path too bad. Huh? I didn't pick it a path too bad. I don't think I found anything I didn't. Uh, the warrant, please. Sound of what he's almost You do You read the warrant. Attorney, would you read the warrant? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Do we have two warrants? This is good. There's a one page you only read. Warning, which is. This is for the No, there's seven. Okay, we have another warrant. Yeah, I got both. Okay, okay. Warrant eighty-seven, sixty thousand. 
Seventy dollars and thirty-four cents. I make that motion. I second it. Any discussion? I didn't, I didn't find anything this time. See, Can you no imagine that? Well, you didn't find that one thing? No, probably, probably I'll find it later. <laughs> yeah, there was one thing in there for Benny. I thought you were going to ask about that. Yeah, that, that was, was just pay. No, no, no. That, that was, was that $600 chair. That was about <laughs> <that was> 40 <laughs> bucks. Okay, okay gentlemen. <laughs> no questions? All those in favor? This man is going to be a... Boy, I don't know what I was going to do from this point. Warrant 89, $998.83. I can't accept that. <laughs> I'll make the motion we accept it. Yeah, I'll second it. Yeah. Well, this is the one Danny's on. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? Any discussion on that warrant? All those in favor? No. Okay. The only thing, hang on, Paul. The only thing I did not get in my email. The first warrant. I got yours, but I didn't get the first one. Didn't come through. Your warrant? They were attached. You so you didn't get the second warrant? No, I got the thing of the meeting, what was happening, the agenda, but I didn't yeah. get the second one. I don't know why. Did anybody else get it? No. Yeah. I got it. I got it. And I was handed a hard copy. You didn't get it either? No. Okay. Well, so the one that I got sent, and I, there was two attachments. Yep. Well, let me check. I might have it with me. Okay, gentlemen, town manager's report. Okay, so real quick issues here. Uh, the first one is uh, we, we received the letter that requires certification for the LRAP uh, for expenditures on capital, uh, capital expenditures on roads last year. That, uh, and there's a program called Sorry, Lo LRAP, a local roads assistance program that provides us money, given that we've spent money, that money last year on these programs, which we have. So. They, they uh, allow for municipal officers to sign it or the town manager. I don't know if you've ever designated and delegated this. To the, it's a very simple thing, but I'm bringing it to you because I don't know if it's been delegated to the town manager. We've looked at it. We, 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 we're looking at the three-year bond issue. We put the bond payment in. That covers this. That talks to me. But if you want to delegate this to me, I can sign it very easily. I just don't know if you've ever delegated this in the past. So it's no, a very simple form. Just, I'll make the motion we delegate it to Denny. No, and I'll make the delegation for me. I know. We we want to second any discussion. All those in favor. Okay. Yeah. I, I just wanted to note that the late has a question. What kind of money are we talking about? Forty six thousand. How much? Forty six thousand. Forty six thousand. <clears throat> That's the local, local road assistance program that the state provides back. Lake Christian Fellowship did make an application. Uh, we basically said that it, it, it needs to be submitted. They were very thankful for us uh, and wanted me to pass that on to you uh, for our ability to work through that issue. And I know that there are some questions about uh, the ordinance uh, that they were uh, working on, and I'll be looking at that and bringing back some um, recommendations at some future date. The, I met with the village meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the village group, uh, Friends of the Belgrade Lake Village. And they provided uh, me with a toolkit for working with other businesses and people in the area. So I, I don't have copies for everyone here, but uh, what, what I thought I'd do is just, if you want a copy, I can get you copies. It basically talks about what they can do to help work with the town and help uh, make that process next year during the construction season easier. So this is part of what they passed out. I, I'm just passing it on to you. Okay. Toolkit. Um, Belgrade Lakes Association is inviting all of you to a July 30th uh, 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 association meeting from 4 to 6. I'm passing that on to you. It's going to be held at the Golf Course, Golf course uh, catered by Good Five. I've only, uh, uh, we've got uh, a price for salt, I'm just, this is informational, and we've got a price for salt from the state for New England salt uh, of $56.20 per ton. I have yet to hear back from Katie Trollop. i got a week before I have to notify them whether we're going to accept this or not. So I'll be bringing that to your attention. Uh, okay. Is KB called committed to you giving us a number? Or no? Yeah, they're, they're supposed to give me a number. 
Yeah, well, last year we worked with Katie Cobb. Within a week. Well, I've, I've, I've been on their tail. Yeah, well, no, that's good. I just can't <laughs> Okay, here's an issue that we're not going to act on. I know your reluctance about ordinances. Right? I'm just bringing you an issue that came up to me, and then you can deal with it at some future day. Just by making you aware of it. You have an issue about a boat mooring. Uh, a person was mooring in front of someone's property. Now, they were following state law, which if the town hasn't got a state uh, a mooring ordinance, state law says that the individual can moor no further out than 200 feet from the shore, or if it's uh, a shorter distance, if you take one third the distance between shores, it's one third that distance, whichever is less. Anywhere in the lake. So you can moor out in front of Ernie Rice's house. And you can moor out in front of, well, Mike, I like the view from Mike Barnett's house. Uh, uh, Barnett's house. I mean, I, I think that would be a great view. I think I'll put the word. Anyhow, that's what the law says. So there was a complaint. There is a mooring right now in front of someone's property. So I started checking with other towns to see if they were, what they were doing with these issues, because I told the guy, we can't do anything. Part of the problem is shore frontage is drying up. And it's getting very expensive. So people now are bringing in boats that can accommodate overnight or seasonal living, uh, or houseboats actually constructed for this purpose of mooring into places because they can't afford it. So the issue is that. So we have towns throughout southern Maine, and even Sydney passed a mooring, uh, a boat mooring regulation. Uh, Will to pass one. Some of the issues are where are they dumping their waste? How are they getting taken care of that? So all of these issues, including the impact on property values, are issues that we're going to have to confront. So I'm bringing that to your attention now. As we get perhaps more of these issues, you might want to do something. I'm not going to mention ordinance, but if you want an ordinance, we can develop one because that's the only way you can control the board. Okay, let's do it again. Then we're going to have to get a harbor mast at a BLT patrolman. I'm not, I'm not going to tell, that would be in the ordinance. So I'm not going to tell you. Okay, what you to do. Bill, you want that job? Mooring's <laughs> <laughs> okay. The town sign. The sign I got a Is that mooring or anchoring? Which is uh, it? You asked me that question before. <laughs> no, I, didn't, I didn't get an answer. So we'll come to that quite, uh, I don't know. I mean, I would assume mooring means you stay there for longer than. Well, you, anchor, you can anchor there forever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think more than means you've got to more sunk in the bottom yeah. and get tie into until the ice forms. Huh? Until the ice forms, maybe. Yeah. So that question would be something I would investigate at the time that you requested that I put out the board. I wouldn't put a lot of effort into it. Right? No, I'm not putting I don't think I'd bother. That's the effort. I just wanted to make you aware that this issue is out. Paper shredder. We have panic, uh, panic buttons installed. If you remember, I talked to you about security issues. If people came and installed them, I read the contract. I told the person, I said, I think they should have been installed in the first place, so he's not going to charge us. At least that's what he said, so we'll wait on that. Um, and we're working with him, uh, the same group, to look at uh, cameras for our room. And I'm looking at, you know, from a place. Thanks. Um, the town sign. Um, Currently where it's at, it's almost impossible to be useful. Um, I'm looking at the potential of moving it. But my understanding is it's been placed outside the right of way of the state, which is 66 feet. You actually can move in to the right of way like most other signs are. I'm looking, I've had um, the sign company, Neocraft Signs come out to see what would be the best location if we were to decide to do that uh, and make it a usable sign. I also was looking at color change because I've heard some complaints about color. Uh, the issue really is that most messaging center signs like this, which is supposed to be a messaging center, uh, are red. So whether we get complaints or not, but I was looking at whether or not we could cover the red with some thing that would make it amber. And we're still looking into that. <laughs> Having said that, do you remember why we yes, so because far the, oh, so far in? Because of the, the, the word about right away because Gil had problems with the the guy at DOT, if you remember, they had a little war going on. It was all about the driveway, too. Same it was about the driveway. Yes. The reason we have it's red, we, we discussed red. I don't know if you remember, but we discussed the color. It was yes. a short discussion. Discussed the red, and the red was because it was the easiest to be to see and to be able to read the messaging center. letters. Yeah. yeah. But they did yeah. bring a demonstration in with white. Remember that? And it was way too bright. Yeah. 
So anyhow, I'm looking into that. I'm going to get a proposal on the cost of moving it. It shouldn't be more than 2000 uh, How we approach that, I don't know, but that will be coming back to you. Uh, and we can move it into the right of way. You, know, you request a waiver and you can get it there. And I've already talked to the, the person, on the, the, one of the sign people, engineers down there, and he said, you shouldn't be a problem at all. They, they in fact, depend on whatever one is where it's at. The salt sand shed crack, we're continuing to find a solution. I talked to the uh, engineers, uh, and the engineers have told me that uh, basically it was a one-year warranty. Uh, if you want to call it ins insurance or liability or whatever. So he gave me some suggestions on products we might use. I said, I do not want to go outside and come in with a fix. I'd rather go. So he's giving me some products, and we're going to check in it, and we're also checking with Paul Mishiro. Uh, our road commissioner doesn't believe that the VAU does this kind of work. So uh, anyhow. Paul Mishiro is good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, there's a tree out here that will be replaced, no big deal. Um, do you, just, just a question, I showed most of you guys the ditching, the crevice, the, what is it called? The washout. Yeah. The washout alongside the driveway coming into the town. Um, I'm going to have Morris look at that, see what he can do, but I don't know if he should do that out of road maintenance or we should do it out for somebody's budget. I'll, I'll bring that back to you, but I just, that was an issue that I want to bring up to you. And finally, Midmain Commerce has uh, asked whether or not they can come before you and present an issue on how the chamber can help the towns. And they've got a number of town members, towns that are members of the Midmain Chamber. Uh, if you want me to schedule that kind of briefing, I can. We can limit it to 10 minutes or whatever you want. But that's up to you. And with that, I'm finished. And it's 8 o'clock, and I think it's about time. Gentlemen, any comments on the mid main chamber? Mm -hmm. If they can help us, why not? If, is that what Oakman just did? And Oakland's then part, and uh, Waterville's part. And yeah, it'd be the small towns in the, in the area. Probably. And they do. They brought in this big bass fishing thing where we were ranked number 16. That was part of an effort they brought yeah. in. It's on TV and markets the area. This isn't the one that has people available to work there. No. no, 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 this is it's just a chamber. It's a chamber. Okay. Mid -mid -chamber. No. okay. Yeah, they're basically an outfit that's going out and pedal the area as being a good area to come to for recreation and businesses and things like that. Mm -hmm. Probably isn't a bad idea. Yeah. Well, I'll bring that back. I'll set up a meeting and then they can raise it with you. And Are we all in accord with that? It doesn't hurt to hear what they get to say. All right. Ten minutes. Under other? Yes. <coughs> Has our harbor been contacted and are they on the schedule for next week? They will be on the schedule. We have not yet contacted them. We will try to get them on the schedule. So I you don't know whether they, we, I there's don't no confirmation that they're available. Yeah, he, he's going to call. He has not called. Right. Okay. Anything else, gentlemen? There's something else. I would, I, yes. I would look at a motion to adjourn. I'll make that. I've got a second. All those in favor? We are done. We have a number of things for you to sign. Oh, trust for all. Come on. Let's put the latest one on. They're being ordered. As soon as they come in, we'll be getting them as well. Huh? I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the words. I bet you that you're going to roll. It's good now. Yeah, the problem. Where do you need a signature? All three of those. Where? Okay.